inspired you or inspired you to go off and find out some more information. Um, if not anything else, you've had a feed, um, you've got some free software, you've perhaps got a 3D image of yourself, and um, you never know, you might know something more about the project we're running, which is great. Now, this session was about you. Um, the idea was that we consult with you on exactly which of these technologies was of interest, um, which of these we should be investing in, um, which are most relevant to you, which are the most future-proof, in fact, um, the three very pertinent questions up there, which are, what technologies do you want to see in your hubs? Do you remember those hubs we mentioned earlier? For your business, or for you personally, and why? Now, uh, in terms of money, we've got a very generous amount of money, and it's you know, part European funding, part taxpayers, I guess. So we've got the you know we've got a pretty free reign of all the things that we've seen today. You know when we talked about three D printers, well potentially we could buy one, but then there's uh, consumables and there's the know how to, to to use that. We don't want to just buy one piece of kit and ignore everyone else. Three D scanners, you know we could buy one of those, we could buy two of those, but we don't want to isolate any particular business segment. So. Um, what technologies have people got excited about? I'd rather write about our programme. That was it, you know, in the corner there. Um, I, I'm not sure what equipment, whether that's a piece of equipment uh, that can be used for other things, or whether it's a programme on an ordinary computer or what, but I thought that was very useful. Was that the, the tablet, the, the, the drawing, drawing one? Yeah. Well, there you are. That's, that's quite a nice example because some of the uh, bits that we've seen have obviously been quite expensive and at the high end. Well, that was actually, uh, Mrs. Briggs bought that for 20 quid from Argos. Oh, right. And um, <laughs> but actually, what it does is it plugs into an Xbox, it plugs yeah. into a games console, and it enables you to do some right. drawing and stuff like that. <coughs> and uh, so that's very much sort of, if you like, the consumer end of, yeah. of the market. But there's absolutely no reason why stuff like that can't be used in the house because we could buy a lot of them. It doesn't matter too much, perhaps, if they get broken. But also, they're very easy to use, and anybody yeah. can really sort of get, get engaged with those. Um, and there are some slightly more sophisticated versions of that sort of thing that we could take a look into. Um, so as I say, that's quite, quite sort of the low end. Yeah. But Fraser's found some sort of uh, larger tablets that you sort of paint on the screen with and they sort of mock watercolours and all that kind of thing. Right. So it's, potentially, if, that, if that's the sort of thing that, that, that you like build and that other people take an interest in, we could maybe see if there are... I, I understand that Hockney did uh, lots of those paintings uh, in both colours. Uh, in his recent exhibition, using that kind of technology, didn't he? Yeah. Did, did it on an iPad, basically. Yeah. Uh, but it's that kind of thing, isn't it? Exactly. But that's, that's another example of it. It's great to think that you know that that, that could well be of use to people. I think because it's uh, it's quite a nice sort of almost cheap but cheerful, sure. interesting little bit of technology. So that's that's good to hear. Yeah, I guess effectively it's digital paper. I, I guess just just for the questions, um, the question in my mind is: okay, we bought some of those tablet. Um, devices where people could draw on directly, uh, which type of businesses would use them, what would be the business benefit, um, that's where we are, you know, so, so really justifying that investment. Me? Yeah, you had a question? You, you go. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, I'd be interested to know how, what sort of feel you're getting for, are there local businesses, the type you're trying to reach, who actually do have clear technical needs because for, for me I just know that that actually I just don't know much and and coming to a session like today has been really interesting and I've learned a lot about stuff I don't know about but I also know that it for me it certainly doesn't have any direct application or indirect application at the moment and maybe never so it's good to know about it yeah. but I would hate for this this money which is a scarce resource to get spent on some fantastic gizmo because it's sexy me away. Ooh, look at that! It's so clever. And actually, it's not actually relevant to any of us, particularly. So, so are you starting to get a feel from from? Because I've missed all the afternoon sessions, of course, because I've had work on. But are you getting a feel for what's what's needed, or are you still at that stage of actually we simply still don't really know? I'm just interested. I think it's best to say sort of both of those. In that, I think we're starting to get a feel. 
but that, that but it is just sort of a feel through, if you like, several layers of clothing rather than anything that's <laughs> more intimate than that. So, so, we're, so we're slowly getting there, I think it's probably fair to say, but we certainly don't know at the moment, and that's really why we're still sort of ask, asking these questions. And it's not just going to be from today either. Um, you know, we're going to be putting out some stuff on the website and things to ask people what sort of things they'd like to see there. Probably it's fair to say, I mean, so some of the guys here have obviously been to a few of our afternoon workshops and things, and they've really been useful for us in terms of finding out what people's actual needs are. There still is some basic stuff and, and support that's needed around simple websites and e-commerce types, things like that. Um, but a couple of the guys who have been at those workshops have approached us today and said, even with some of those 3D scanning things, that you know, actually we can see how we can maybe use that to promote what we're doing. Even if possibly you're not using it to actually create product or create art, um, but you can nonetheless use it to, to help market it and that kind of thing might be yeah. an option. And I guess, guess the other side of it is, of course, for the hubs themselves. So it could well be that um, you know, while this technology is hopefully for the use of the community and the local creatives uh, in the area, um, I still think that there's a potential role here as well for those hubs themselves to actually use some of the technology, maybe, again, almost as a marketing thing. We may be able to get people in because they can get their heads scanned. Yeah. Um, and then while they're there, <laughs> flog them with painting and some beads, or, or whatever it might actually be, and, and sort of generate some, some interest in that way as well. So we're still absolutely very much in listening mode. Um, in terms of, sort of the process that this is going to go through, uh, we're on the basis of today, other conversations we're having, a quick survey of, of everyone we've been in contact with so far, we're going to draw up some draft ideas and proposals by the end of this month. And those will then be circulated for comments and that kind of thing, so people can give us some feedback on those. So even when we've almost made our decisions, if you like, there's still going to be another opportunity for people to have their say in there. So we're hoping that's going to happen. Um, I think there might be um, a need for um, video conferencing, not just over Skype, but actually with the conferencing system. Because if you want to run your uh, workshops, etc., and you want to put them out to other venues, um, and a lot of schools now have got video conferencing, particularly academies, because most of those move into that. Again, you can be going out to, to several people at once. I mean, I went down to uh, one of the schools just outside Lincoln, and what they were doing there was using resor teaching resources, and they had one teacher teaching A-level French, who'd only got two students in her school taking it, but she was teaching across to seven other schools at the same time, um, just using a screen, and the digital, sa uh, sorry, the uh, video conferencing uh, gave her seven little images up on the screen. She could see the students she was dealing with, and she was actually teaching using um, an interactive whiteboard and a projector. So, you know, the scope for taking this out to outlying things over the top of the broadband as well. And what I'll say there is that we have to be absolutely focused about our audience, which is the creative cultural heritage sector businesses. Um, now, I think there is an application for, for video streaming, and it might be that if someone's putting on a production in a theater, that that can be streamed elsewhere for another audience, you know, even here. And likewise, um, if there's a production somewhere else in the country, that that can be brought in-house um, in, into the theatre. So, um, so yes, I think that is a technology that we're interested in, as long as we can mould that to the audience and the, the business segments that we um, that, that most desperately need it, which are those that we just mentioned, which is where our funding is aimed at. So mm -hmm. um, just bear that in mind. Frank, thank you. Turn what I'm thinking of, whatever you choose, to put in your house. It's got to have back up and people coming in to use it. There's got to be somebody there who's going to be able to teach you how to use it. So what financing has been or will be a portion to support for, not just the support for it being there, but for the individual who comes and says, I don't know how to use it. Um, Basically, it all comes out of the same pot. Yeah, so, so you've got to... Uh, we, we have to apportion that appropriately. Yeah. Um, the key word here, as always, with these projects is sustainability, um, mm -hmm. but we're very keen that we sort of factor that in, you know, from the get-go. Um, so, you know, we're part, of the, part of the process is we select the technology sort of in sort of spring time, what that's going to be over the next uh, sort of six weeks or so. And then the time when that technology actually gets installed will be in early summer. Mm -hmm. And that, we've got a big bit of work on then in terms of training people up mm -hmm. to, to, to be able to use it. Maybe we have to bring in some outside expertise to help mm -hmm. us to do that. And hopefully that we can make it into a, a sustainable sort of thing, which is not necessarily sustainable in terms of funding and that kind of thing, in terms of that everyone can just use it and things like that. And we're really keen to build that in. Part of that could hopefully be in terms of 
tapping into the local community where there are people who already know a bit about this stuff and, and they can maybe spread their expertise. And that might be a fantastic way of using some of the video conferencing ideas you were talking about there. In other words, we've got the 3D scanner guys up in Cheshire. They don't need to be coming to Louth every five minutes if we can maybe do some of that support stuff and training stuff uh, sort of remotely. So we really need to think about that. And part of our proposals will be those ideas around sustainability and support and that kind of thing. In the very short term, we'll be around um, over the summer to be able to do it as part of this, this process. And we're, we're seeking to find ways that we can make sure that Whatever technology goes in, yeah. it's going to be of continued use to people. Um, the, other, the other thing I can foresee is that a lot of the equipment would be one-to-one -one usage. Um, how are you going to deal with lots of people wanting to use the same thing, and when? There's a lot of logistics. I mean, it's, for example, I mean, if you bought your 3D scanner, you've got to have somebody fairly technical who's able to run it and it's only one thing at one person at a time, and I don't actually know how long it takes to actually make things. Absolutely. Well, it's, it's something, yeah. I mean... Totally, yeah, there's a process to be talked about here yeah. as well, isn't it? Um, and, uh, which is good, that's the sort of thing that Fraser and I quite like, to be honest. Um, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, we've got, we've got to come up with process. We're already looking at various models. One is the, the Ecomodo model that Fraser's been looking into, where you can build up um, sort of, is it like an online library of stuff that people yes. can borrow? but they have to sort of book in through a system to be able to do that. So we could maybe have a system quite straightforward to build where people would say, well, look, if you want to use a 3D scanner, here's the slots that are available and people have to book into those slots. So, yeah, we'll definitely think about that stuff when we're installing it. Do we have any sort of commonality with all the interests and we're very diverse in businesses that we run um, that you're going to actually be able to pull something that's useful to lots of people or whether it's going to be something that's only useful to one? particular sector. It's going to be extremely difficult. I mean, I don't know how you're going to do it. it, is, it there, there are hints of commonality. So yeah. uh, we've got two businesses who are interested in uh, glassware, for example. Yeah. Uh, and I know we've got a few businesses which are in uh, the sort of video photography. So we're trying to choose equipment which is reasonably generic, but yeah. um, it's going to happen that we start to buy equipment which, which mm. is for a specialist purpose. Yeah. So you're right, it is unavoidable, but I think the large items, the large, um, the large spends will be on equipment which is a bit more universal so that we don't get into that, that problem of favouring one yeah. industry over another. Yeah, and the, the, other, the other side of that also is, of course, is that we do have five locations for this stuff oh, to go in, yeah. and none of them if we're, you know, are that far away from one another, mm -hmm. so it could well be that each of the hubs specialises in a certain type of yes. industry or a certain type of, uh, sort of uh, work. So, um, so it may well be we can, we can figure something out along those lines. Are some of these things um, easily transferable? So that if, for instance, we had something at that and um, people in Skeg sort of showed an interest in it, so if we have it for a few months here and do a swap with one of our pieces, that sort of, or is it once you've got something settled in one of the hubs, you're going to want to leave it there? I would hope that people could share it mm -hmm. and it could be moved around. Yeah. I mean, some of the stuff, maybe with a 3D printer, that might be a bit tricky because you yeah. need a crane or something yeah. to, to move it around with. Um, but certainly for the scanners and handheld bits of equipment, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think absolutely that should happen. Mm -hmm. you know, really, um, and I think people would travel a, di a distance to use something very specialist, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to travel you know, 40 miles just to use a, you know, some basic piece of kit, so it's, it's about appropriateness, isn't it, really? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Has anybody else got any ideas in terms of specific technologies that they'd really, really love to see? Um, I say Bill mentioned the, the, the drawing tablets and that kind of thing. Anything else that this area of Lincolnshire desperately needs? Yeah, Out of all the bits of kit that we've got, we've got a 3D scanner, we've got uh, four 3D printers, we've got desktop CNC milling machines, um, uh, out of the demand that we get from where we're at in Lincoln, by far the easiest machine is the laser cutting machine because it's just simple to use. Mm. It's um, and it's being used by people who've got an interest in fashion, graphic designers, architecture, architecture for modelling, mm. jewellers. It's had quite a nice wide range of applications. The problem with 3D printers, I find, is that you could put a 3D printer in situ. Uh, one, it could be out of date in six months. Either the hardware or the software, or usually both. 
The consumables are very expensive um, because they are dedicated to that particular machine, particularly the powder, the Z Corp machine. Mm -hmm. You have to buy their consumables. Uh, the powder to fill our vat, uh, it, it's over a thousand pounds a go. Um, the, the inks that you put in the machine have got a life of less than 12 months. Um, and if you don't clean the machine or use yeah. it regularly, <laughs> what I'm saying is that. What you're saying is don't buy a 3D printer. What I'm saying is no, <laughs> you've got to be careful which one you buy. Yeah. Um, there are some that you can have, it, it'll work, it, you can switch it off and then. A month or two months later, you switch it on, and it's fine. Um, the Z-Corp machine, they'll say it's the fastest machine that's on the market, but you need a technician. Uh, have you got a budget for a technician? Mm -hmm. It will need one. Um, and the, the scanner, they're really quick to use to, to scan something, but I spend the majority of my time processing the computer information, and you need a fairly high-end computer and high-end software. The software we bought for our scanner was more than the scanner. Right. It um, sounds from that as if the printer, it, it might make greater sense if people aren't prepared to get together and do a bit of travelling, to book some time on your machines and to put in some kind of a, um, some kind of a funding from this area towards the fact that you know, one's using the, the, the uh, university machines rather than spending a whole chunk of money buying one and having it here. You know, and, and concentrating perhaps on some of the more basic pieces of equipment that you can have more of mm -hmm. and that more people are perhaps going to use. I, I, think, so, I think the idea of, of the uh, laser cutter sounds like that, The laser cutter, I, I, I pick up on the point of geography that people don't want to travel. Um, I think well, we don't mind travelling, but, but please... It's it, could be, it could be 80 miles round yeah. trip to yeah. go to Skeg. It's got to be a good. <laughs> Lincoln and the East Coast, there's a particular agenda with the East, East Coast. Yeah. And having something in the East Coast, rather than five hubs, you're sort of spreading, your, spreading it possibly quite thinly there. Um, there are some 3D printers that are, more, that are easier to use, that are a lot cheaper, where you could possibly have one in each centre. Uh, you could also maybe have behind there a 3D printer that the local school can build, so you're drawing their interest in it too, on the potential of their parents. But the software, having a nice range of software that makes 3D aspects accessible, um, and then mo most kids are into certainly the 2D stuff, and that's what makes a laser cutter accessible. They're, they're, we found that to be a really useful machine.